Why hello there beautiful. So, before I was a fabulous YouTuber, <laughs> before I was who I am now, <laughs> which I don't know what that is, I was broke, okay? I did not have money. I, it was a lot. I have very expensive taste and I had no money, which doesn't really work out very well. So when I was balling on a budget, as the kids say, I still had a love for nice wigs, okay? I love wigs. I just love the fact that you can transform your entire look like that. Maximum outcome with minimal energy, which is how I like to run my life. And I couldn't afford those expensive wigs that were pre-plucked and pre-laid and pre-sewn and full lace. And you know, the wigs that I use now, which I'm very fortunate to be given them by companies. Thank you to all of you guys. So today I bought this wig, all right, with my own money. This wig right here is from Amazon. It was 38 doll hairs and she's seen better days. So when I was balling on a budget, I learned how to transform these things into works of art, all right? I laid them flat, I styled them, I did so many things to them, and today I'm taking a trip down memory lane and I'm gonna show you guys how I can transform this kind of hideous wig, but good for the money, into a magical, just gorgeous, natural, nearly natural looking, fabulous. It's, it's cute for the price, but we can make it a thousand times better. And with a very minimal effort. So here's a little overview of it. Girl, nobody's hair is this long and this thick all the way towards the ends and like, honey, we all wish, but no, it doesn't happen without hair extensions. This hairline, so unrealistic. Nobody's hairline looks like that, honey. I'm sorry, we all wish our hairlines look like this. She doesn't even have a part. I mean, we're gonna fix her the F up. So it's time for me to ruin my good hair day and put this wig on my head for you guys to see what I'm working with here. Hi, my name is Whitney. I'm from Delaware. I moved to New York City last year and I'm working in PR. That's what this wig is telling me. So <sighs> Whitney needs a makeover. But as you guys can see, it's kind of cute. Like it's not the worst thing in the entire world. It's workable. Clearly I haven't cut the lace off yet. So I'm gonna show you guys all the hacks that I have to transform this drabby, unrealistic looking wig into a gorgeous ray of sunshine. Let's do it. <laughs> so firstly, I'm gonna take some clothing pins and just pin this lace down. Don't pin it too close to the edge because you don't wanna ruin the lace. It will stretch the lace out a bit. Just put it down a little bit. There we go. All right, step one. So the first hack to making your wig look a little more realistic kind of doesn't apply to this wig. I'm sorry, kind of a lame first tip, but usually I would pluck the hairline, but in this case, this is synthetic hair. If you were using real hair, it would pluck, but synthetic hair, which is basically just plastic, doesn't really pluck out that easily and usually rips the lace because it's a very tough material. So typically I would go in and fix this hairline to make it look a little less full and thick and crazy like it does now, but it'll work. Once I cut the lace off, it'll look much better. But that's the first step. <laughs> if you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that. So just look them up real quick. You'll figure it out. But the next hack that I have to share does apply to this wig. Yes, you're welcome. I am actually gonna take a steamer. It looks like this. I bought this on Amazon, very inexpensive and also like the best steamer ever. This is like a bit one big Amazon ad today. We're gonna brush her hair out. I usually like to use a brush with natural bristles in it that are very bendy because otherwise it's just gonna pull up the hair way too much. Synthetic hair does get very tangled easily. You don't want to pull out it too much or else you're gonna break all the hair off. So, even like a full plastic detangling brush, those don't usually work very well for this either. So we're gonna part it where our desired part is, which hair hack number three, don't part in the center. It's just not gonna look as realistic as it possibly can. I would part it slightly off to the side. That way the eye is kind of tricked because when it is symmetrical on the top, your eyes go right towards it. And if it's not perfectly symmetrical, you're gonna clock that wig in two seconds. So that's why I like to do a little off center. That way your eye isn't attracted to it right away. Just brush it back. Make sure this is nice and even. And part it. 
this wig is only lace for the first two inches. And don't make the part too perfect. That's not really how natural hair works. And now we're gonna take our steamer and just gently steam this part into her hair with the plastic fibers. I mean, you know how plastic works. It melts under heat, right? So we're kind of just melting it a tiny bit so we can reform it into the position we want it to be in. It's pretty fun. Hold it down with your hand for a second just to get it set in there. See, now, even if you try and part to the side, it still has a part in there. You can also go like this. Really lay it flat. Our goal here is to really get this as flat as possible. That way, when you put this on your head, if you do already have hair underneath your wig, that already adds a lot of volume to your hair. So you're trying to make your wigs as flat as possible. That way, when you put it on top of those braids or whatever you have, you're not getting like a bulky wig situation, which is never, ever cute, ever. So you want it to be extremely, extremely flat. You can even part it and get the underneath first. Give yourself a little facial on your eye. Luxury. By the way, a lot of the things I'm using in today's video will be linked below for you, so check it out. All right, so now we're gonna finish straightening the rest of the hair. The heat will straighten the hair. So you're just gonna brush it out and then apply the steam. You don't need to be perfectly straight. Just getting a little bit of that wave out will help you. Bam, she is laid flat as can be. Perfect. So this next part you guys might be a little bit scared about, but I promise you it's not hard and also it's gonna be a razor. This will also be linked below if you would like to buy it, but we're gonna do a little razoring here. And razors are very friendly. They are easy to use. You'll see. We're gonna push our head to one side. We're gonna put our razor in our hands like this. And we're just gonna get rid of some of this bulk because nobody's hair is this thick on the ends or in the middle or anywhere really. First off, let's section out a little bit of hair up here. Hair is never this long in the front. It's always the first place hair breaks off is around the edges of the head. We're gonna damage her hair for her to make it look more real. So we're just gonna take our razor and just start like, at the chin and get rid of some of that hair around her face. That way, this will open up your face also when you put the wig on. That's a lot of hair. We're getting rid of that. Let's make a huge difference just to give you that little, little like texture. Look at that, so good. A little texture up there. Let's do the other side again. Again, below the chin. And then just work your way down. Super easy with the razor. The realisticness of real hair. It's always a little shorter in the front. Ooh, it already looks so much better. Look at that, gorgeous. And now I'm just gonna thin out her hair. So I am gonna take sections like so and just point your razor down and just get rid of that surface layer of hair. Get rid of enough hair so it's not extremely thick. By doing this, you're adding layers to the hair. So that way when you push it up, it stays. See all that texture you're adding? And don't be scared to get rid of a lot of hair if your wig is super bulky. And just really go in on that underneath layer and just get rid of all of that hair. Just because you don't need it there and it's only gonna add to the bulk. The reason why we don't do it on the top of the head is because you don't want a bunch of short pieces sticking out on the top. And it's not cute. I've made that mistake before, it's not fun. Look how laid flat that is. These little layers in the front going around the face. You push it up, it stays like that. And I'm gonna go ahead off camera and finish that up and do the same thing all around the wig. And I'm gonna get rid of this length. I'm probably gonna chop it like that short just because it's, again, it's just not realistic to have hair this length and I don't think it looks cute. So I will do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just got rid of a lot, a lot of hair on her head. It's still really long, but as you can see, so much more realistic and this length is so pretty. I can't wait to put it on my head. So now, this is the step that people abuse a lot. All right, and that is the baby hair moment. <sighs> Listen, people took this trend, this baby hair wig trend, and really, really overdid it, just like the whole Instagram makeup trend. So we're gonna part less than a half an inch. No, you know what, like centimeter of hair in the front. Tiniest bit of hair, just like that. And comb this forward. Let's leave it like an inch long. Just get rid of it. You don't need you anymore. 
You can even skip this step if you don't like baby hairs. This is just nice for when you glue it down and you just wanna like make the seam from where your skin is to where the lace starts seamless. I don't always do it, but why not today? You can use your scissors and cut a little bit more. I like to really thin out the baby hairs. That way, because nobody's baby hairs are thick like this. Nobody's. That side is all finished. Beautiful, okay, done with that step. That is probably one of the most important steps is all of that cutting. Now we have her laid, we have the baby hair snatched, we have the cut, we got rid of the bulkiness. Now we're gonna curl the hair. I'm gonna do very, very loose beach waves. Again, I keep saying natural a thousand times, but we're gonna give her that natural beach wave look. You can leave it straight, but I wouldn't really recommend it if you're worried about your hair looking unrealistic when it's synthetic. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture in her hair just because I feel like that looks more natural. I'm gonna set this iron to around 300 degrees, which is a little hot, but you'll see I'm not gonna leave the heat on her hair for too long. It's gonna be very, very, very quick. Let's do it. We're gonna add a tiny touch of hairspray. I'm using Orbe Super Fine, which is very expensive, you don't need to use this, but you can just use like a cheap hairspray and just lightly coat the hair just to give it something to hold on to. Let me curl. Boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, and let it just sit. Don't touch the curls because what's happening is the plastic is heating up, so you wanna let the plastic cool down before you move it around too much. That way the curl sets in the hair. And again, we're not trying to get a, a, like an actual curl in the hair, we're just trying to get texture. You're gonna see it's gonna look kinda like a little bend. I'm really just trying to like mess up the hair a little bit so it doesn't look as perfect. You can then twist it with your hand and then let that sit. Just heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Twist it and let it sit. Awesome, now you can rake your hands through and you're gonna get that little bit of added texture. See the difference between the two sides? A little more textured over here and definitely straight over here. And you can just keep going with this until you have the desired outcome you're looking for. I'm gonna keep going off camera and I'll be right back. All right, we have that side finished. Spray it with hairspray. Get those waves to set in. Take my dry shampoo. This is a lifesaver with synthetic wigs. It's gonna get rid of the shine and add that little bit of texture we're looking for. I think that looks perfect. Beautiful. Do not overdo the hairspray though, because then the wig will get tangled very easily. I recommend light hold rather than strong hold, or else it will get tangled on you. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, and now this last and final step is probably one of the most fun because it kind of ties in everything together. It gives it that really, really natural touch, and that is the root color. Not many people have this color growing out of their heads, so we're gonna give her a bit of a brown, cool colored root moment with eyeshadow and an eyeshadow brush. All right, so I'm gonna use this old Morphe palette that I have. It's just, I think it's like 350 palette. Any brown color will work. Just make sure it's dark enough for whatever your hair you're putting it on, obviously. So I'm gonna dip into this like cool brown color over here. And I'm using this kind of like blending packer brush. I don't know. We're gonna do that and we're gonna go right in. This is pretty self-explanatory and just give her that root. And if it's not dark enough, go and use a different color. This is also gonna be really nice because it's gonna get rid of that shine that's right at the root. And this looks absolutely amazing. Just try and not get it too much on the part, which I just did. Otherwise, you're gonna have like a really dark part and it's not gonna be pretty. So that's one side done. I hope you can see it on camera. That made a huge difference. It got rid of that shine and it gave her that natural looking root moment that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna go over on this side and do the same thing. You can also get creative with this and leave the pieces in the front out and have like a face frame moment right around the face and then darker around the rest of the head. But I am not a huge fan of that look. So I'm gonna make it all dark up here and it is gonna look fabulous. I think I said that the last step was the last step, but this is actually the last step. I'm gonna take a concealer that's in my color, put it on my hand here, and we're gonna paint that part very, very lightly with a brush like this. Don't put too much, because it looks really obvious when you put too much of this on here. Just tapping it and rubbing it in. 
All right, I'm just gonna cut the lace off real quick and then I'm gonna apply it to my head. Some people like to cut the lace with a little bit of extra room up here, but I like to cut it as close as possible to the hairline. So here you guys have it. This is the finished look. I mean, $38? Where? Where, sweetie? I realize that this still doesn't look like a totally unbelievably realistic wig, but I think I can say that I slayed this challenge. I mean, it looks pretty damn good for what it came from and how much it costed. Listen, I would wear this out. It looks good and I'd be proud to rock it. We did a haircut. We did a baby hair number. We did a root number. I lightly waved it, I styled it, we did everything. And I think that this looks a whole lot better. And the color looks fabulous. I'm obsessed with it. And I did not glue down this wig. I did not glue down the baby hairs. This is just the wig plopped on my head in two seconds. That's pretty good. It's pretty impressive. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about how to snatch your cheap wigs. Cause girl, I know what it's like to be on a budge and want to look fabulous at the same time, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching today. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at BradmanNYC. Don't forget to live your extra life and I will see you all next time. Peace.